Here we go. Footy is back today. I'm Jared Harbrow. Wait, no, I'm not. If only. I would have won a lot of uh, community service awards. <laughs> I am actually, in fact, James Clements. I'm the host of the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop. It's not really new. I've been doing this the entire season. This is the last round of that season, though. And joining me for the midweek madness show here on the AFL Today Show, two of my very best friends in the world. Over there, it's Alex Donnelly. So I was going to say Jim's doing a community service by looking after us for all these years. The fact that he's saying best friends is, is a bit nice. It's because, that's a community service. But yeah. it's also because we do have our one-on-ones this week, so it's oh. just been nice finishing off well. Okay. I'm buttering you up for the <laughs> travesty there to follow. Uh, that's Alex over there, and in the middle, it's the little fella, the stats guy. Yeah, I've actually got all the times he's called little fella, just ready to go. Send it straight to HR for our one-on-ones. Yeah, you, yeah, but you know where your emails go straight to? Where? Spam. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> He doesn't even have an email address. <laughs> yeah. Just a I fake computer. I don't want an email address. Like, I've got less the, meetings are the better. The two-year-old that I've got, he's got like a fake little laptop. It's exactly the same as <laughs> Stats Boys. I, like, I cannot remember stats. So it's I teaching definitely him the ABCs and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, joining us today will be a very special guest, new friend of the program as well, Big Ned Moyle from the Gold Coast Love Suns. This. I particularly am stoked with this. It's awesome. Ned Moyle rules. Right. Before we do that, though, subscribe to the YouTube channel across all the social platforms. What is it? Aussie rules today? Can I say yeah. one thing about the YouTube as well? We just found out. Just go onto the bell. When you click on the bell, click all. And then you get notifications for all of our stuff. And it actually helps us a lot. So when you click the bell, click all. I didn't even know that. There you go. That's unreal. Yeah. I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, you might have to do that. So. Checks it up. There you go. Go check it all out. Footy is back. It's the midweek news ticker, ticker, ticker. First off, the saddest news I think we've had to have on this show is the... Uh, the passing of Sam Landsberger, AFL writer for, I guess, News Corp, Code News Sports. Sports Network, Code Sports, etc. Cricket as well. Horrible. Uh, horrible. Fox footy host for the midweek tackle. Just horrible news yesterday. Uh, so our thoughts and positive vibes go to all of Sam's friends and family. Definitely. Just brutal news. And uh, the entire sort of News Corp family was very shook and uh, very, very, very downcast and sad with that news, obviously, from yep. yesterday. So Absolutely. That sucks. He was one of the best dudes out there. Great dude, great talent, and just senseless, senseless tragedy. Definitely. Right. You can actually see, I think, on the front page of today's Herald yeah. Sun, he's on there. You can check out some of the other stuff. And all the words up. on social media about him as well. Yep. Yeah. You can guy. definitely, you know, tell the measure of a person, like when you get like that sheer volume of like, that dude ruled. Yeah. Yep. You know, That's that pretty much the general consensus of it. Anyway, on your Sam. Uh, let's do some news. <clears throat> Dan Houston, five weeks at the tribunal, gentlemen. Yep. Interesting. So he's going to be appealing the decision. Of course. Uh, but that would essentially mean that he won't play in any grand final if Port were mm. to make it. Uh, and everybody's, oh, he's played his last game for Port. I'm still going to push, you know, Yeah, I don't know about that. that just yet. Yeah. Uh, you've got loudmouths like Alex there to say stuff like that. So Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's his job. Because I think if you're Dan Houston, it just sort of depends on what your priorities are. He said he wants to come back to Melbourne. Doesn't, exactly. mean, doesn't have to mean the demons. Exactly. But at the same time, it doesn't North. like... You sort of think about the idea, oh, I wouldn't mind moving back there. It doesn't feel like anything's set in stone with him right mm. now. Yeah. Um, and the contract situation makes it very interesting as well. So, uh, But five weeks, we'll talk about this in the NRs. Feels like that was about to land. Didn't if we he, say five on the yeah. show I said five or six, yeah. yeah, I said, yeah I like if six, he appeals yeah. it, does he go back to three or four? No, like it's zero. It's zero oh, or it's five. Well, it's definitely not going to be zero, but yeah. I think. Does it get downgraded? Leo, I'm, Leo's not, got I'm no not sure, idea. to be honest. But yeah, That's it's probably going to stay at what it is, I think. Yeah, they're not getting off. Yeah. You can't knock out a dude and get off. Nice one. Unless you're um, yeah. So not only are Port fans complaining about it, uh, going, oh, well, you know, it's whiplash. It was whiplash yeah. that caused In our comments, actually. Yeah, there's a few arguments in our comments. But Fev and Wayne Carey, I mean, two of the what greatest minds in society have come out and said, oh, it was a fair hit. So I don't know if that's a fair hit, if, even when Dan Houston came out and said, I don't know why I didn't tackle. That's what he yeah. said in the actual yeah, thing. He's yeah. like, I don't know why I didn't tackle. It was dumb. I if like you're on the opposite side of an argument to Fev and Wayne Carey, you're probably on the Fev right isn't side. Fev is nowhere near as bad usually as Wayne Carey, but yeah. But also, how did Wayne Carey see it? I thought he quit watching football. This yeah. is mine's eye Exactly, point. yeah. We go back to Wayne Carey in the uh, Round the two-meter Peter yeah. smashing of uh, yeah. Wicks. Uh, yeah. Harry Cunningham. Harry Cunningham, one of them. And uh, one of just those anonymous Sydney players. <laughs> wow, one <laughs> of Wogger's greats. So... Wayne Carey was like, right, if that's going to be the charge, then I will just stop watching footy. So I, we all assumed say, that Wayne this? Carey just wasn't watching footy the rest yeah, of the yeah. season. So what a liar. Why would he be commenting on it? Hmm. I'm, I, for one, am shocked that Wayne Carey lied. Yep. Right. Hey, other news. <laughs> Retirements galore. Dylan Grimes. Yep. Optimus one. Grimes. After he got over his uh, multitudinous 
calves, yeah. hammies. Lower leg issues. Lower leg back, issues. No, wasn't it? It was back as well. Yeah. All related to the lower leg. Still yeah. end up playing, what, 230-odd games, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Three, yeah. three premierships, obviously. Best and fairest. Australian defender. In his pomp, he was one of the best defenders it was in the, the game. Yeah, when, when they were on fire, it was like him and Rance. Oh, my God. They were unstoppable. <sighs> Makes Not sense bad. why they won flags. Yep. Liam Shields also retired. North now, Melbourne legend. Liam Shields. No, that's not. it. I just I assumed he retired two years ago. It's just like he actually hasn't been too bad, but he's just yeah. lost a step in pace. Liam he's, Shields quite quit two yeah. years ago. <laughs> well, he's, he just went to North for two years. He did to get actually paid. retire at Hawks, and yeah. then so when he was doing his speech just yesterday at North, he's like, "Oh, I've done this, so this shouldn't be as hard as last time." And then Clark was like, two years? Yeah, righto." Crib notes. It's like I'm just like bring it up in your note, fo- notes yeah. up on your phone. And they just oh, delete yeah, out yeah. Hawthorne for North yeah. and uh, Sam Mitchell for Clark. Yeah, he, he's a Hawks legend. Hawks, Hawks life member. Three premierships as well. Ben Brown also retired. Oh, I love uh, Ben Brown. Got a lot of time for Ben Brown. It was always like a – so – He was the missing key for the Ds winning that flag. When he got there, mm. he it changed was... the spine of that team pretty dramatically. They win the 2021 yeah. flag. Yeah. It's awesome. Yes. They, do, do they win it without him? No. Probably Best run-up ever as well. No, most annoying I, I love that you just, he just would stroll in and you'd, he was the same as Lucky. We've had – North have had a lot of uh, accurate goal kickers in the last like few years. Uh, ben Brown never missed. Just running up that that twenty or thirty meter run up he had was very funny. One of the more unique dudes out there in footy as well. Yeah. So really good account. off the field as well. Uh, speaking of retirements, Dyson Heppel looks like he's going to get a farewell game this week, which is oh. kind of neat, just in time. Bombers fans are very happy that he's getting a farewell game, but they're like, oh, it might be a week late. But no, I think he this, deserves this a farewell is the right game. time. Yeah, I dead agree. rubber. I agree. Checks out. Uh, Jack Viney re-signed. Three-year <sighs> deal with the Demons. He okay. didn't run out until the end of next year anyway. So, yeah. Mm. A uh, bit of an extension there. After he said, yeah, nah, maybe on Saturday the Ds did these ones. And then he's like, okay. Nice. Is that how you're going to roll stats, boy? Like, what with? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just in your meeting when we look to extend your contract? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. You've he doesn't me. have a contract. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other little bits and bobs. Uh, the AFLW will be testing the footy chip, which is fantastic news. I'm yes. very excited for this. Can't wait for it to work at Frankston. <laughs> I, I said <laughs> there's going to be – it's 100 – just knowing the AFL, something with it is going to happen that's not going to work, and then it, they'll be like, oh, we're not going to use it for another year. But I'm hoping it all goes really smooth. It was my vibe on the AFLW show preview today, which should be out later this afternoon after this show, where I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a guy that's actually on the sidelines that's got the connection to this chip, <laughs> not someone in the art going, hey, it was touched. Hey. <laughs> This it would is be pretty fun. Definitely going to work well. Mm. Should it be fun? But it'll be fun. Other little bits and bobs from the midweek madness of the news. Tim English looking likely to miss with a calf this weekend. Still. What was his ankle last ankle, week? Ankle, calf, something like that. Lower leg. <laughs> Lower leg. Lower leg. Yeah. Uh, Riley West out at least for this game. Ooh, with a that's jaw. a sneaky. He's been good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Been fantastic. <clears throat> so definitely misses this one. Could be a little bit longer because he had to have surgery on his jaw. Someone finally punch him. He just got the West have really good jaws as well. So that's they do. They got great jaws. Mm. Yeah. Uh, No Jordan Ridley or Nick Cox for the bomb raise this weekend. Uh, Well, Ridley didn't. Cox was already out last week, and Ridley's been injured for a while anyway. Yeah. Uh, no Tracy for the Dockers well, at the moment, and good. Sean Darcy still remains a question mark. Well, their season's over. Yeah. Oh, tough ones. Uh, Tanner Broon looking to be back for the Cats, but no Tomahawk or SDK. Oh, the Tomahawk Tomahawk's not getting s- back in anyway. He could sit in the goal square, and he'd kick six this week because McGovern and Barras aren't playing. He doesn't want to have to amputate his toe or whatever. Nah, what was that story? Fine. Get him to 800. No McGovern, no Barras. You just roll him out there. Yeah, you just sit him in the goal square. Are you 85% Tomahawk or not? <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm 60. Don't care. Just stay there. Just sit in the goal square. We'll handball it over to you. Kick your four and we'll sub you. Damick stays out this week as well for, well, soreness, seemingly. Got on the tins after their game on Saturday <laughs> night. He's like, yeah, back the old team. Or he's just like, you know, that knee's feeling a bit jiggly. Yep. Soreness. That's what I felt all weekend. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Uh, and Georgie Artis and Tom Todd Marshall at Tess as well for the Port Adelaide Power. Yep. We had a lot of comments of, of Port fans on our videos just saying, we need Georgie Artis back ASAP. And if we get yep. him back, they're confident of uh, a good finals campaign. Power prawn start. Hit us up. <laughs> what is your like top six forwards that you want for Port Adelaide going to the finals? Because he'll hit us up in the comments. Yes. Don't mind it. He or she. Georgie Artis is a huge, huge, yep. huge swing piece for that. Power Whereas Todd Marshall seemingly is always hurt. Right, midweek winner and loser of the week. The loser is obviously Dan Houston. I don't know why I didn't tackle. We, I think, yeah, I think it was just a spur of the moment. He's gone bang. He was a bit unlucky because there is some of those bumps. Like uh, I can't remember who it was, but they literally just bump him in the chest. If he was that much lower, he would have just got him in the chest and it would have been okay. If you choose to bump and you injure them, you have the duty of care and you are gone if you hurt them. It's very simple. I agree. You just have to tackle. It's not rocket surgery sometimes. 
Yep. The duty of care he is could on have you absolutely as the annihilated him with the tackle yeah, as well. He could have got yeah, could have deleted tackle. him yeah. right in the in the yeah. midriff, but chose to bump. Yep. Ever seen a guy fold in two? Yes, once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the winner for me, despite being losers, the Brisbane Lions. Why is that, Jim? You might ask. Why is that? Well, they've brought in Trenton Cochin, I guess, as like you know a consultant for like big for hair? pressure oh, and stuff. Like Maybe pressure. for awesome jaw lines and hair. Uh, hair. And how to win grand finals. Flip side. They've also brought in my beloved Phil Smythe. Talking about Adelaide, hair. Adelaide 36 is you want two differing opinions on oh. hair and hair care. There's Trent Cotchin on one side. Can we? And there's all the I know is doormat. there's a photo of Trent Cotchin and Phil Smythe right above Jim's head there. Yeah, can we chuck I a photo it. up there? It's Phil Smythe's hair. Does Phil Smythe still have the big comb? Oh, the, sorry, the little comb over? I think he shaved it. Oh, but, uh, that was iconic. One of the great hairdos of Australian mm. basketball, Phil Smythe. Why he won it? three titles as a player, three titles mm. as a coach. Is so. he the one that's involved in all the chaos going on in Adelaide at the moment, or is no. he out of there? No, he's, he's out of there. there. Uh, he's getting paid by Brisbane to hang out and just yeah. go, yeah, just don't lose big games and big moments. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, you idiots? Uh, so I actually love this for Brisbane going, yeah, we keep bottling it. What's up with that? We need to figure this out. I like how his so. name's Phil. It's a great name. Probably Philip, one <laughs> might, might be assumed. <laughs> great name. Anyway. I love that for Brisbane because it is one of those strange things. Like it feels like so much of their problems are mental. Yeah, hundred percent. Same. Think Joey Danaher is stuff. the definition of the Brisbane mental issues. Where no, nah, he just goes full Joey. No, but he is like when he's having a set shot, he just thinks too much. I think about stuff. No, he doesn't. I don't think he doesn't think, which is why he doesn't pass it to his teammates. Interesting. Yeah. Either way, Brisbane did they fix all their troubles? Maybe. No, we'll I don't it. know about that. <laughs> Let's do some yeah now. Nah! That's right, the round 24 year nahs. Five weeks for Houston. Was this the correct call, gentlemen? Yeah, nah. Yeah. Oh, I'll go nah. Should have been six. Wow. Yep. Uh, to placate the poor power, power fans out there, nah, it was. Yeah, all the, been there's zero. so many people in our comments like saying it should have been off. All like, the. Fev, Wank, yeah, we were right. Yeah. I'm just saying, no. I think that's the entire point, right? Like, if you're going to injure the player and you choose to bump, it's been written in stone for yeah, a while yeah. now. Like precedent has been set, sucked in. Like don't do it. Well, it's David King obvious. was saying it. Like we should already know. I liked his point about we should already know before we've even gone to tribunal. All right, that's five or six weeks. Whereas the tribunal is just so all over the shop that no one really knew what it was going to be. They knew it was going to be around four or more. Well, yeah, but we should already know. In the, there should just be rules. Like all right, if you get a high bump, you knock someone out. That's six weeks. Or yeah, it's just still all over the shop, which I don't like. Yeah, the MRO has a lot of cleaning up to do, I think, with a lot of mm. just like the sort of squirreliness of their We've been saying uh, that for years. Though. Judgments. Well, this is actions. why it needs to be a full-time position that they need to work yeah. over the weekend so they can come out Sunday morning and be like, hey, we're going to the tribunal. We're going to ask for five. This needs Bang. to be more written out to ex like different things that happen because there's usually the same, the tackles, bumps. Well, yeah. Check marks. Laura yeah. Kane's got a lot of work to do. All right. Uh, are you correct by default <laughs> if you disagree with Fev and Wayne Carey? Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, just disagree with them. I don't know, it depends on what it's about. Other than the best Fev's way to crash up tablets. Well, I mean, they've probably got some pretty good ideas. That's true. Or get away I, with doing drugs. I don't want Fev's tips on horses either. Okay. That's not what I was talking about. <laughs> it's all right, though. Um, I love the, like, Fev is just. I like Fev. Too. Fev leans into it. He's an entertainer. Wayne Carey's just angry. Yeah. yeah. And just yeah. weird. And like, just. <laughs> Fev's good on radio. Like, you think about all the hits that Wayne Carey took over his illustrious career. Like, you feel like maybe we should just get, like, the mm. old. You know, scan is like... Eh. I think it's some other things that he's put into his body rather, rather than that. Either way. Yeah. Bigger and better year nah. Yeah. Does anyone outside the current top five on this I, AFL ladder I chucked it in there for you, lads. Yeah. This AFL premiership, do they have a chance? Yeah, nah. Nah. Uh, it's happened once this oh, century. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yeah. I'm going to say yeah as well because I think the floating idealized version of the Western Bulldogs... At like, their okay, best, yeah. what, what have I said? The line of demarcation all year <laughs> has been the Bulldogs. If you are above the Bulldogs, you can win the flag. If you are below the Bulldogs, you cannot win the flag. So it's going to be flag. pretty funny if they lose on Sunday and miss finals and everyone above them. This is it. That's exactly what could happen. So this top five could suddenly be... <laughs> the top eight. The top eight. Yeah. So but if the dogs I, I, lose. Yeah, I'll say, yeah, outside that outside that top uh, top five. Just the Bulldogs. So six, I'm going to say the top six. No, nah, top four. Fair enough. Uh, if Carlton hadn't just completely bottled this season, I would have been like, nah, we should have got a shot. No, nah, geez, you're cooked. Ugh. Uh, should the Swans rest some key players yeah, this weekend? Point. Yeah, nah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, there's like a bit Look of- how serious he goes. Yeah. Like, yes, yes, we should definitely do <laughs> that. Like, of course you should. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Horse isn't listening going, 
Well, Alex convinced me, so I better actually Will Haywood take a bit. No, of Alex and up. Horse are like this. As soon as he said go back to yeah. the box, he of course back. they should. But the weird <laughs> thing is, Rust versus Rest is always one of my yes. favorite vibes. You get two yeah. weeks off suddenly, and then you've yeah. got a qualifying think, final. If you bottle it, you look like an idiot. See, someone like Callum Mills, no rest. No. But Brody Grundy, Older Will players. Haywood, Lizard, Old Man Rampy, he might not have a knock, but don't risk Old Man Rampy for the sake of a game I against Adelaide. It should be the age uh, line. If you're over like nah. 28, 29, rest. If you're younger than that, you're fine. Mine's more, I think Blakey's banged up. Will Haywood just couldn't walk at times and ah. he's been sore for a month. Brody Grundy's lost his pay. And Dane Rampey, you just can't lose but him. But yeah, you just might as well rest those players. dudes and go, right, we've got nothing to play for really this weekend. Boom, we'll be fine. Yep. I like it. Of course they should. Uh, was it correct for Eston to not pick Dyson Heppel last week? Yeah, nah. Yeah. Yeah. He's not in their best 22. I don't care what Essendon fans say. They're going, oh, he probably is in our best 22. What was the uh, – Wiedemann came in and all the Essendon fans were saying, oh, he's better than Wiedemann. They play in completely different positions. That's not how AFL teams uh, picks work. So I think, yeah, he's fine to play this week because it doesn't mean anything. He's clearly not in their best 22 anymore. Uh, and, yeah, he can play this week but not last week. So I said it to a mate of mine who's a mad Essendon fan. I was like, no matter what Essendon did last week, if you, you picked him, show, yeah. you would have been raked over hot coals. Yeah. You didn't pick him and you lost. You raked over hot coals. The best decision was to not pick him and hope you won. Mm. And now it's like, oh, well, you get the farewell game in a game that means if nothing. They... Shame it's not in Melbourne. Yeah. That's it. Well, you're on the other side of this. Cowards. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute cowards. Of course, like the tough thing to do is to not pick him, right? It's the, it was the right thing and to do. The, the finals were on the line. But at the same time, like, does he make your team better? No. We just have no way of knowing. We don't know. Well, we, I don't <laughs> think he does. Being, I don't think he makes up eight goals. The entire thing is, like, you're trying to close the book on an era for Essendon, right? Mm. I think Dyson Apple goes, long-time captain. You're saying goodbye to Dodoro. Yes. Sheeds is gone as well. Yeah. That's good. At the same time, as I've said time and time before, what do you stand for as a club? Do you want to say farewell? Like, you should have made a bigger effort, I think, on that day for that game in front of your home fans. Like, you can still have the farewell game at the Gabba in front of, like, 8,000 mm. yeah. like fans or whatever, the actual actual Bombers fans up there. It's just one of those things where I think AFL has, like, a happily romanticized, idealized version of, like, saying farewell to a beloved player, and it's awesome. Yeah. I love that vibe. To do it in front of, like, they should have made a bigger deal if he wasn't in the best 23, sucked in. Could he have cares? been the sub? Yeah. No. But still, yeah. sub him in, would have been fine. Quick side note, Sam Naismith just retired. Sure. Oh, there yeah. you go. Did his knee again, the poor bugger. Crayfish. Many, oh, crayfish. I knew it was something like uh, that. Six ACLs, I think. Jesus. 33 games in 11 years because he kept doing ACLs. How's the poor he bugger. been still? Like, I know he's good, but how's he still on the list? Well, he he missed. The Swans delisted him, and then he had the year in the VFL last year. Wow. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> good. Fare thee well, Naismith. Fare thee well. Also invented basketball back in yeah, Mr. Canada yeah, in Dr. Uh, 1870s. <laughs> uh, the big year now. Nah. This one was brought up by noted AFL uh, pundit who doesn't live here anymore, uh, Nick Rewald, Nicky R. Yeah. Oh, he really? Wrote in, wrote into Triple M. I thought you were going to say he wrote into us. I'm like, I don't know if he did. That was Christian Petrarca. And to quote Nick Rewald, have more trade capital in the history of the game. Wow. It's know. been touted as a potential trade p- target. So this so is the crucial aspect. Do we just do a yeah, nah, for this and then get into it? Well, yeah, I'm going to say nah. I'll say nah. I'm saying well. absolutely There's nah. There's been some massive... Massive He's coming off broken ribs, a busted spleen, basically been in a car crash. He's 29 to start next year. Yeah. Like, if so it was got, 26, it'd be different, I reckon. So exactly. you've got what? Let's say four to five years left. Of top level. Like, Chark is awesome. But you also don't know I'm not saying the Chark's not good. He's awesome. But in the history of the game, yeah. there's been people who have been traded, moved, whatever. Like, some were free agents that chose to go elsewhere. Yep. But if you look at the names like Chris Judd, Jeremy Cameron, Gablet. Junior, mm-hmm. uh, Diesel, Plugger. I don't know if Plugger was the Abel one was. I, don't know, I think Plugger even was Tom a Boyd was still like a Ryan Griffin and oh, a top yeah. ten pick. Stuff Tim like that, Kelly right? was all the picks that got Jezza. Exactly. So he's not the biggest in the history of the game. The, the biggest trade in the history of the game is Christian. Yeah, that was that was crazy with Josh. A Josh couple Kennedy. of picks, Josh Kennedy, Josh Kennedy. first. Yeah, I think it was. It was two and ten. I that, think, is that know? that's also like Ted as one of the most even trades ever because yeah. Josh Kennedy's one of the best goals. Because at the end of it, yeah, which team goes? Nailed it. I reckon West Coast look at it and go, nailed it. But yeah. Well, they want a flag. Yeah. Judd, Judd got a brown. He won a brown, though. So, you know, uh, swings around us. Flag. But Petrarca, look, I think one of my favorite things to look at from this perspective is like, all right, Petrarca, if you had to trade him straight up for a player right now in the comp, where does he land? Right? He's in the top He's 10. top 10? Top yeah, 10, but yeah. it's like you think of the age profile of him compared to a Nick Dacos, a Zach Butters, Harley Reid. Yeah. 
all of those. Harley Road, obviously not there yet, but you think about it, he's 29. Yeah. Nick Dacos is, what, 22? Mm. Butters is 23? Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a, it's less than what I'd give up for one of those. So if, if you're saying, let's say, Dacos and Butters are three first-rounders, I'm saying Petrarca's one in the top 10 and then another one in the top 15. Yep, so agreed. Yeah, more trade capital in the history of the game that's been touted as a potential trade target. Yeah. I think you got with a bit excited five, there. With five years' worth of contracts still left there as well, you have to yeah. negotiate this. Nah. Nah. It's just it's not really got a bit Nick excited. Nick I don't know. He's been watching too much NFL preview stuff this year and he's just like, oh, the footy's on as well. Oh, Triple M just called me. What do I say? What do I say? Good to see you still on the ball. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to our chat with my best mate. That's right. <laughs> Ned Moyle from the Gold Coast Suns right now. All right, here we go. We bring on... One of our very best friends on the planet right now. It is long time just admirer from afar. It is my beloved Ned Moyle from the Gold Coast Suns. Ned, what is going on, mate? How good is it to have you on AFL today now? No, thanks for having us, guys. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Excited. <laughs> there we I go. mean, your hair is like one of the single greatest like heads of hair in the comp. So we're just stoked to have you on the show basically at this Absolutely. point. Like, do you guys have like a competition at the Suns about who has the best hair? Um, oh, probably not a competition. We've got a few. <laughs> rogue, a lot of people go the short hair up in the heat uh, up yeah. here. So there's a lot of buzz cuts rolling around. So and- did you pin Jed Walter down and shave his head? <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a part of the uh, the fines that we do. So yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. That checks out. Um, I mean, rolling in there with a head of hair like that, like does it? Like it's the sweat <laughs> on the back has got to kill you up there, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not too bad. It's probably a bit long at the moment. I need to give it a, a trim, but um, no, it's. It, it's been good. As long as it sort of stays out of my eyes at the front, it doesn't really matter, I guess, what happens at the back. So uh, that's sort of been well, the way. Party, party at the back. <laughs> yeah, there it's we a go. party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, that's all, that's all my hair question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, four, thanks yeah. for joining us. <laughs> the, uh, let's, uh, let's start with your year. I mean, you've actually you've gotten a lot more run this season, which has been fantastic. What was it actually like stringing some games together yeah. this season? Yeah, no, it's been fantastic. Like, um, I've really enjoyed having a bit more opportunity um, then last year, obviously, yeah, played my first game last year. And then, yeah, to be able to get some consistent games together, I had a little stretch there, about four or five, and a place on my other side. Um, it's been great. And I guess the main part about that is from a personal uh, perspective of just sort of getting more comfortable at the level and, yeah, feeling like I can sort of compete week to week, which has been good. Not bad. Yeah. I think uh, there was a moment you kicked your first goal. Yeah. In yes. my hometown of Ballarat. Was it in, I was in Ballarat, that's right. Yeah. It was amazing. So, I mean... No doubt you probably went down to 21 Arms to celebrate <laughs> after the game. and Well, it doesn't exist anymore. That's a, that's a very niche Ballarat reference. Right. Yeah, I don't think it was um, but how was that? How was that feeling? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it was an unfortunate result. But, mm. um, no, it's pretty cool to sort of to kick a goal. It wasn't, it wasn't certainly something I wasn't really focusing on, I guess, as, as my role in, within the team. But, to, yeah, to get, to get the 50-metre penalty... Um, and once once you're there, you're just like, oh, you, you don't you don't really want to miss it. Yeah, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss. Yeah. Make sure make sure you yeah go through your routine and put it through. So that was great. Awesome, nice one into the uh, the North Ballarat Stadium stands <laughs> or Mars Stadium as I think we call it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, nice one. You also signed a four year extension in the middle of this year as well. Was it cool locking that away? Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. Really. Um, first of all, I guess to the club for showing some faith in me, and yeah, it's pretty pretty cool to I guess have the. Exp- um, I've sort of played, this will be my third and a half year now. So to, to double that is, yeah, it's pretty pretty awesome in terms of my career, yeah. Nice one. You got a question there, Stats Boy? Yeah, we'll go from uh, the coaches. You got Stewie Jew, obviously, in the past, going from him to Dimmer. What was the effect on your game or the overall team? What, how did you see that from uh, going to Dimmer? Yeah, um, I mean, both both coaches um, have been fantastic for me. I guess Dimmer um, has been really, really good for me this year in terms of being really clear what he sort of expects for me. Um, as a ruckman within the team, which is which is great, really, because um, on game day, sort of, you, you do all the prep and, and training and stuff, so I can sort of just go out there and play um, on instinct, knowing the certain things I need to do for the team. So Dim is really good with that sort of communication with all the players. I think. Awesome. Do you are there other dudes in the team who are like, oh, I'm a little bit afraid of him because <laughs> I'm a bit afraid <laughs> of him. Like, yeah, oh, he's he's a, he's a personality, absolutely. So I mean, no, nah, he's. He's, he's very welcoming to everyone. So, like, um, no one's really afraid of him. But, he, yeah, it's, you, you sort of you don't want to seem too angry too often. Until he's <laughs> well, he's got those pythons as well. Like, he and yeah. Kingsley, I reckon, just, like, if we had a battle of all the coaches, like, yeah, like, yeah, Bevo, like, I mean, you feel like Dim would be pretty odds on to like, come out on top. He has got that dog in him. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. 
Oh my God. Um, anyway, have you got a question there, Alex? Let's go. Yeah, uh, backing up a bloke like Witsy, he just seems like a genuinely great dude and someone that could teach you a lot given he is an awesome ruckman. Amazing, but what's yeah. it like having him as not only someone to follow around, but also being your captain as well? Yeah, Witsy, Witsy's fantastic. I guess um, sort of I get to get to know him a bit twofold in terms of um, being a ruckman and as well as a, as a leader. But mm. yeah, certainly... Um, this year in particular, I reckon I've been sort of working a lot more closely with him. Um, obviously, get to train against him a lot, but yeah, from a from an on field perspective, he's he's been a fantastic he's a fantastic captain for our footy club, and as you saw on the weekend, leads by example. So, um, no, nah, he he's been great, and yeah, exactly, certainly helping me um, get better as a ruckman in terms of ways to sort of maneuver my body and to just yeah stay stay competitive. Yeah, he's a beast. That's actually it's a really interesting spot, right? Because I think. You're like one of these uh, up and coming ruckmen in the comp. Like, what actually? What's the secret behind getting a good hit out? Um, oh, I think I think a good hit out is one that that lands in your teammates' lap. Really, like, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, uh, at the end of the day, that's that's all, that's what we try to do most. So, um, and yeah, obviously, the the easier you can sort of move out of stoppage, the better. But um, no, I think I think the best thing that we we as ruckmen can do is just put it to our teammates' advantage and. Yeah, we got some pretty good midfielders who sort of you can let do the rest of some of the time. So what I'm hearing is if Noah Anderson and Matt Rowe don't get the ball, it's there for oh, boys. I put it <laughs> yeah, there for you. Already, what are you doing? You put it on a platter. So Come yeah, on, boys. Yeah. It was straight down <laughs> off the left arm. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't think you guys are not. <laughs> no, not quite. But yeah. <laughs> uh, is there, like, I mean, apart from Witsy, are there other Ruckman that you sort of look to in the past or currently who you sort of model your game on? Oh, cool. Um, yeah, uh, watch, watching a lot of footy growing up, I think uh, I've watched a lot of Max um, Gorn growing up because um, he's sort of the, probably, yeah, one of the best ruckmen ever in terms of he's so complete. Um, he's good in the air, um, good in the, like in the clinches, in the clearance and can go forward So and, and behind the ball. So, yeah, he's in terms of someone that I sort of look at as, yeah, being re- very complete, you can always pick up stuff from him when you, when you watch him back. Yeah, love that. Nice one. Uh and I mean, how do you sort of judge? So we sort of hit on this, like how much more run you've had this season, like. But how do you judge your season, like as a whole? Like, do you see it as just like a sort of all right? I've gotten out there on the park a bunch more. I can sort of show what I can do. I've seen my game develop X amount. Like, how do you sort of judge it at the end of a season? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Like, I think for me personally, um, I, I basically I, I reckon I can go off on how how competitive I am in terms of being able to stay in games. Like, I reckon. Mm-hmm. When I played my two games last year, I was um, by the end of the game, I was sort of, I was starting to sort of let um, let let the opposition get on top a bit more, and I think I've been able to get get better at that again this year, and that's certainly something that I guess you need to improve because at the end of the day, like doing it over four quarters is one thing, but you want to be able to do it over four quarters for twenty two rounds every. So yeah. it's yeah, it's that that constant process, and and yeah, obviously um, getting to play on witty each week is is a good measure as well to see how I'm going. Nice one. Well, I mean. It's been a up and down year for the Gold Coast Suns. Like our big uh, theory as well up here, well down here in Melbourne, has been that the twenty eighth parallel, uh, which is the latitude across the uh, you know around the globe, because you've won all these home games and you've won in the NT, but failing to win away, except like, for Essendon, except for the Essendon game, right? Which is an that was incredible awesome. game. Yeah, Absolutely awesome. loved every second of that. <laughs> Mac and Andrew get around him, uh, <laughs> but I mean, is there any sort of like? you know, acknowledgement in the group of like, wow, how do we get better at away games? Like once we cross that 28 parallel, yeah, yeah. we're good at home, awesome at home, great in the NC. How do we transfer that away from home? Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I, the thing that we've spoken about probably isn't as much as where we're playing. It, it's it's really all in our control, I think. Like it, it comes it comes with to do with our intent and how we, how we sort of start games away, especially like I think – a lot of games where we've played away this year, we sort of we gave up too much of a, a head start, or we, we just haven't been um, on from the start. And I think that it can put you very far back in game. So, and I mean, like obviously, yeah, we we play well at home, we train a lot at home, but I I think it I think it's more than you know just travelling away and, and a mindset. Like we, we we were all very aware of it, I guess, but um, no, nah, it's it's to do with how we come out and how we start our games with our intent. I think yeah, is the main main contributor. Nice one. Very good. Something there, Alex? Uh, yeah, so far, obviously, come up against a lot of Ruckman. Who is the toughest uh, opposing Ruckman that you've played on so far? And sort of why was that player tough to play on? Um, definitely the the hardest game I've had to play this, well, in, in my 
uh, time in the AFL was on uh, Sean Darcy last year. Oh, I think he's a big sucked. boy, yeah. Yeah, because um, obviously I was a little bit, um, little bit probably 12, 18 months younger, didn't have as much size on me. So, yeah, he probably um, was able to manhandle me a bit then. So I've, I certainly learned a few things from that. But, yeah, he's, he's a strong man. And he very really right. is. Did you go up against the big O in the Q clash back in round 10? Uh, yeah, for a little bit. And, yeah, he's sort of – he's similar. He's a very long, lengthy um, – <laughs> Elbows the size of a bloody butcher knife. That's yeah. a competent elbow. For yeah. Him. No good. <laughs> um, no good. Uh, who's your favourite teammate to tap it to? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there's, there's a lot of lot of them. Um, probably one I've played a lot of footy with is my good mate Alex Davies. So, yeah, look Alex after Davies him. Alex nice. Well, who do you reckon makes you look the best? Yeah, that's the one. You know, who, who, who's got the best Rally. finish after you tap it to him? Nah, well, you, yeah. I mean, we've got such a good midfield group. You can't really single anyone out, I think. Like, no, Anderson. Um, All right. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> uh, who's the loosest unit in the uh, Suns group chat? What a oh, question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we've got a few a few immature heads, in particular James <laughs> Jeters. He's usually okay. number one for this sort of stuff. So, yeah, he's he's a... Um, yeah, a loose, loose, loose unit in the group chat for sure. <laughs> Does that mean he's the pest of the group chat as well? Because you've got the bloke that's always sending five, ten messages. He's just like, mate, that's shut him. up. That's, I think that's him in our, our one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. They coincide. They go hand in hand. <laughs> nice one. Uh, have you ever actually joined Matty Rowell in a pre-match feed on the uh, People's First Turf? <laughs> um, it's tempted me. Um, I, I, haven't, I haven't made it a part of my routine, but no, <laughs> It's um, it's good. It's good. It obviously, works for him, doesn't it? He needs to be worried. He needs to worry about what's in that grass before every game. I don't know. I'm a bit worried about. Quite that, clearly, right? it works. It does yeah, work. It gives yeah. him super human. It's like know, Popeye. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Popeye. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Uh, nice one. Was there anything else you wanted to hit on there, gentlemen? Yeah, you've got the well. It is the dusty farewell this weekend. The so Dimmer Bowl. Yeah, the, the Dimmer Bowl as yeah. well. So there's going to be a huge crowd at the MCG. Sort of. It'd probably be one of the biggest crowds you've played played in front of as a group. How does the sort of preparation go? Into, there's going to be sixty to seventy thousand screaming fans opposing us Is this it? week. Ooh. Yeah. Oh well, I think certainly from our um, point of view, it's very exciting. Like um, to play in front of big crowds is, is always good fun and. Obviously, we, we this is I think the only game we actually get to play at the G all year. So what? from that yeah, from that perspective, like we when we play down there, we want to put on a good show, I guess, mm. and to sort of um, play our brand of football. So we yes, we've been a little bit inconsistent at times during the year, but I think certainly for going into next year and um, I guess to show a lot of people what we can do this week, it, it's a yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity to really um, stamp some authority on next year, hopefully and. Yeah, launch us into preseason. Nice one. I guess that yeah. sort of where I want to leave this is. I mean, what's the vibe at, with the group as you sort of finish off this season? Like, uh, miss out on finals, but like, how do you sort of stay focused and like head towards that final, you know, finishing post? Yeah, well, I guess like we're we're all very motivated, right? Like we we all want to have a lot of um, success as a group, so and want to play finals. So I think we sort of we want to take every opportunity we can, right? And especially. While there's while there's still games left, like we know how long it is in between the season, so you sort of you, you don't really want to waste a week, no matter where, how your season's going. Mm-hmm. So there's there's always stuff to take out of games, and especially momentum. I think at this time of year into our next season, you also don't want to get Dimmer yelling at you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Angry dad in the off season, not a good vibe. Yeah, you just you drop, <laughs> drop some more f bombs and just be like, you know, send, send everybody running. It'll be pretty terrifying. I mean, and what do you personally do to stay focused? Did you sort of finish off this season as well? Um, oh, I guess during during the week we sort of like to um, when we when we're in at the club, be really on and focused and yeah. um, have really great intent with what we do. And then I guess when we're away, like I um, play a bit of golf and and study as well. So you know, it's just having a good good balance, I guess, as everyone talks about these days. Very nice, nice one. Business management. Love that. Nice. <laughs> that's my, that is literally oh, my no, degree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tough to joke. Um, but that's awesome. Well, I think the last one as well, like being from down here, moving up up north, I mean, how have you dealt with the uh, the heat over the last couple of years, Ned? I mean, you've got the uh, you've got the hair to sort of sort it out. It but mops it up, yeah. Yeah, maybe it does. Yeah. No need for a sweatband or maybe double sweatband. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh, it's it's... It's always um, 
it's always hot. So like certainly when I first got up, got up, it took took a while. But you know, we you, you get used to it after a while, and and it is and it is great to train in really like hot mm. hot days, nice and sunny. Like you can always, um, you know, you're always going to get some nice some nice weather up here. So that so that's something we definitely cannot complain about. Definitely, oh, okay. yeah, we, nice we can't one. get that here all the time. Well, here's hoping the sun will be shining on your season next year as well, Ned. This has been awesome. Thanks for joining us on the AFL Today Show, my very good friend, Ned Moyle. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. All right. How good was that chat with my best mate, Ned Moyle? Sorry, gentlemen, you're on the side now. My That's best right. mate is now Ned Moyle. You've got better hair than both of you combined. Yeah. Uh, right. You know what happens at the end of this week? Finals. Well, the really? finals will be set. The top eight will be set. There'll be 10 teams packing their bags, probably all, you know, boys trip to Bali, 100%. hanging out. Maybe we go to Arizona and get some, uh, yeah. I don't know, some pretty hardcore workouts in. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> With Bailey Let's Smith. go down to Inverloch. What do you reckon? Uh, <laughs> let's do it, though. The scenarios from here for your top eight. What does every team have to do this weekend to make the eight? This is interesting. Very simple. Very straightforward for some of them. Sydney, doesn't matter. Turn You're up. First. It's fine. Turn Just rock up. up. Just, yeah, rock up. Don't lose by 100. And don't let Port win by 100. Well, they can't do anything about that, but yeah. So just win. Just win. Be there. Number two, Port Adelaide. They stay second just with a win over Freo. Yep. Yep. Very easy, right? Just stay second, beat Freo. Home final. Laughing. Uh, If you lose by more than seven, eight goals and the Giants win, you're in a bit of trouble perhaps. But But if they lose and the Giants win anyway. They'd be very unlucky not to be second. If they lose, cooked. GWS, they stay third with a win. If they lose, the worst they can be is fourth. So if they lose, they will drop below Geelong, presuming that Geelong actually wins. Yep. Uh, if they win, Port lose, they can jump up to? Second. Second. Geelong, down there in fourth. They beat West Coast at home. They'll stay fourth. Yep. If GWS lose, they can slip up to third. If they can make up a 10-goal percentage gap, which is pretty interesting. It's, it's, when they make up a 10. It team. could work against, yeah, well, against West Coast. There you go. No McGovern, no Barass. Oh, yeah. Who knows? This is why Je- Jez is just going to kick 10. Or big big game for uh, Shannon Neal. Brisbane. They stay fifth if they beat Essendon. Fourth if Geelong lose to the Eagles. Well, we said that Geelong could finish eighth if they lose, then Dogs, Lions, Hawks, and Carlton all win. <laughs> but they're not going to lose to West Coast. But, ju- you know, just in case. Just saying. <laughs> just in case. But Brisbane most likely probably stay fifth by beating Essendon. Yes. Geelong win, likely. Yep. They're still in fifth. Bulldogs. This is an interesting one because yes. you've got the swing game, obviously. GWS versus the Western Bulldogs. If the Western Bulldogs actually beat GWS and Geelong and the Lions lose, they can actually get to fourth. Crazy. Which is chaos. But it's most likely they stay sixth. Yep. Right? If They can win. miss the finals. Yes. They like, can miss the finals. Very unlikely, yeah. If they lose, Hawthorne, Carlton, and Frio all win. <laughs> which the is like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. <laughs> which is very likely. It'd be the most Western Bulldogs thing ever to be the best team in the last month. And Looking at that, that could happen. 100%. Well, they also, yeah, they have to lose. You have the Hawks, Carlton, and Frio jump them with a win. But I think the big problem is Frio, like... Play port. Yeah, they've got their port game. It's just really hard. It's a 50-50. Yeah, anyway. Uh the Hawthorne Hawks in seventh just beat North. Not hard. Just win. And you're in the finals. It's yeah. awesome. That's all you have to do. North are horrible, stats boy. I'll what be there doing? and, yeah, crying about it. You'll this. be on the tens. Yep. If the Western Bulldogs lose, though, yep. Hawthorne can get to sixth. Home final. That's amazing. Check that out. Uh, they can also miss finals if they lose to North and Freo and Carlton win. And if they, and lose, to, percentage if there, they yeah. lose to North, they deserve to miss finals. Exactly. I agree. Carlton, all they have to do is beat the Saints and they stay in the top eight. Simple as that. You just made that sound so much easier than it is. Win a game of football. Just win a game of football <laughs> against the Saints at Marvel. Oh, <laughs> Live camera on Jim for Sunday. It's just like, oh, oh I'm very juice. Yeah. And if they lose, what can happen? Can to we you get if one of those? Lose to the Saints. GoPros. On your head? It all depends on Frio beating Port. If okay. Frio don't beat Port, Carlton just fall backwards into the final. You can somehow finish fourth though. They can finish <laughs> fourth if they beat the Saints and Geelong, <laughs> Brisbane, Hawthorne. And the dogs all lose. We're back, baby. <laughs> Just win and you don't have to so Then you got to go to Sydney the first week. Exactly. Frio in ninth. Uh, if Carlton, the dogs, and the Hawks win, they're done. Yep. If yep. anyone loses, they still have to beat Port regardless. So they just got to win. Just, just win, win and hope and for the best. And then hope for the best. Yep. Hope for the best. Well, the thing is they'll go into that last game knowing what they have to do because they're playing the it's last so game. Can we not put our tip into like uh, 555? Just the tip? All right. <laughs> uh, tenth, Collingwood. <laughs> it's losing it. Tenth. The pies. Here we go. They have to beat the D's and make up <laughs> 200 points on percentage to catch Carlton. So they and need Carlton to win. lose as well. Yeah. If they can win by 300 or, yeah, just make it up 100 and, and then the other team's 100 as well. But the they demons. they also need Fremantle <laughs> to lose too. Yeah. They're not making it. So predicted eight. What do we land on? Oh. I think we go Sydney. Yep. Port. 
I think it's still GWS in third. I think it's Geelong. I think it's Brisbane fifth. I then think it's Hawthorne. Yep. Bulldogs and then Carlton. I agree. Mine's different. I've got Freo jumping the dogs. Ooh, I've got G- you just hate the dogs. No, I've got GWS beating them. I think. Oh, okay. I've yeah. got. I think GWS are playing brilliant footy at the moment, and I think they'll win. And then Freo because they'll have the. There's a chance. Mm. And Sarong and Brayshaw all go, let's go. Weird things happen in Bell. And it's also, yeah, yeah, because with with that happening, Port Adelaide, they've still got everything to play for to finish second, but I don't know. Just not feeling it over in Perth. I think they'll be too good. But Port are that flaky that you never know. They have looked awesome the last month and a half. Adding in the Port potential flakiness over in Perth, hostile environment, last game of the season. Yep. Fair enough. Nice one. Oh, come on, Carlton. Right. <laughs> that was Carlton making it, just playing Hawthorne in the In terms first week. of the Brownlow and Coleman predict, because we usually do these on the Wednesday, the Coleman is basically all what she done. wrote. Yeah, it Hogan's, Hogan's won it. He's 16 in front of the snake. Hmm, interesting. What's uh, Charlie going to make up to catch Hogan? Is he even playing this week? That's it. No one knows. <laughs> Go up against the Saints and just goes bang, kicks 20. Uh, that. After Jesse Hogan's already kicked six earlier in the day. Exactly. And the, Col- the Coleman, I mean, that's like, Jesse Hogan has been the outright just like, you know, launch pad for like the last, what, two Month. months? Yep. Crushing it, so he should be fine. The Brown, though, is a little bit more interesting with Cripps. Uh, I think it's Cripps to lose. It does feel like that way. Da- but I think Dacos. Lucky Neal could come from the clouds. Dacos has had a couple of pretty good games here and there. The Bont is going to be like the solid performer, yeah. but I don't know if he's had their massive Bont's going to be like Shalor's going to take a lot of votes off him. It's going to be an interesting one, though. So I think we're going to have a... What about like someone like Sarong? Yeah, he'll be up there, but he... He just had a half that middle of his period, games yeah. have been meh. Half of his yeah. games have been really good. Uh, but we will be breaking all that down in our award show in the bye week. Yes. Which will be fun as. So that's it for the AFL Today Midweek Madness Show. For today, we'll be back on the AFL Today Show tomorrow because that's what we do here on the AFL Today Show. We're today, but we're also tomorrow, and that'll be coming up today, tomorrow. So uh, thank you to the Ding Guy for jumping on, Alex. Have fun tomorrow, boys. And the Stats Boy. Thank you. And of course, my best mate, Ned Moyle. What a legend. I love him. Uh, Remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff. Uh, You can see it on YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X. Lots of fun stuff this week. We've got the goal and the mark of the week of the year. (laughs) What else we got? Last one. Oh, no, second last one. We've got lots of other stuff, don't we? Yeah, 40 numbers. uh, Songs. Songs. Yeah, we've got heaps of stuff. Loads of stuff going on. Uh, so subscribe, star, and like the show across all of your podcast apps, as well as our other shows, Cricket Today Podcast, Football Today Podcast, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, Hold All Tickets, and, of course, the AFLW yes. Today Show, uh, which will be launching this Great. week, which is awesome. So check that out. Uh, anything else there, gentlemen? No. That's it. Excellent. Get around them like, I don't know, the Blues getting around a big win over the Saints this week. Oh, God. <laughs> Can't even say with a straight face. It's, I'm already nervous. If it's, it's a Wednesday. win, it's, it's not going to be a big win. It'll be like one point if you do win. The Saints are going to trounce them, and then I'm going to be just absolutely just bricking it the entire rest of the way. All right, that's it. We'll catch you tomorrow for the team show. I think we'll have a couple of the uh, younger yeah. components ah. of the show. He's, a, he's on holiday. Yep. Well, he's holiday. I'm sending him to Tassie to cover a footy match. Ah. So settle down. I'm, yeah. I'm at Mooney Valley. No one cares. All right, right, <laughs> we'll see you then. Look after yourselves, and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.